Now, to Donald Trump's trial in Manhattan, he's not going to be testifying in this criminal trial. And it comes as Alan Dershowitz writes in the New York Post. Just when I thought this case couldn't be any more bizarre, I read this piece. Uh, he said, there's never been such a spectacle as this hush money criminal trial against Trump. At one point in the trial, Judge Merchant cleared out the courtroom after a witness for the defence, Robert Costello, raised his eyebrows at one of his rulings. Dershowitz wrote, for some reason I was allowed to stay and I observed one of the most remarkable wrong-headed biases I have ever seen. The judge actually threatened to strike all of Costello's testimony if he raised his eyebrows again. I mean, just when you think this case couldn't be any more crazy or corrupt, you read something like that. Yeah, no, it's it's so interesting. I think the issue, at least for me, I think the biggest issue is the contrasting coverage of what's going on. Now, the problem is it's not being televised, okay? So it's not being televised. Really, you're just at the whim of the biased uh, interpreters uh, of what they are watching. So if you're watching for, and I've watched both, you watch CNN, for example, uh, you think that the the prosecution is destroying the defense and that Trump is 100% mm. going to be prosecuted. If you watch Fox News, it's the exact opposite. They're saying there's no question Trump is going to be acquitted. Uh, they look at a guy like, they look at a guy like the Judge Merchant. If you watch CNN, he's the greatest judge we've ever seen. If you watch Fox News, he's totally biased. We don't know because we can't watch this ourselves. Now, I will tell you this. I know I'm not a lawyer, but I'm playing one on Sky News. Um, one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to demonize the judge when you're not really playing to the court of public opinion, you're playing to the jurors themselves. The one thing, I, I have been a juror, and the one thing I can tell you is that the jurors have a special connection to the judge. They're not thinking about politics. What they know is he was there when they were first chosen. He was there when they, he walked them through the process. He's there when they have lunch. They have a deep connection with it. They don't like when the prosecution continuously attacks the judge. So I think that is a tactical mistake. But the worst part is we just don't... We can't, army. Most army. don't know. <laughs> the, yeah. the, this jury and judge do share a deep connection. It's a... It's a uh, hatred of Donald Trump. I mean, please, let's not pretend that this is some sort of unbiased trial in an unbiased territory. This is deep Democrat territory where the jury pool comes from a very... Uh, Democrat voting base, and we've seen just the elements of this trial that are unlike anything else legal experts who observe these things for years have seen. So I take your point about the different coverage, but I would argue that most conservatives expect to see a conviction in this case, but they don't see it that way because they think Donald Trump's getting a fair trial. They see it because it seems to be almost predetermined, but then it will be appealed and uh, probably overturned at some later date. But I want to get your response to this next issue, Army. Uh, tell me about the reaction we've seen to the Biden White House offering its condolences to the butcher of Tehran, Ibrahim uh, Raisi, who died in a helicopter crash early this week. Uh, just the, the moral decay that would see an administration offer condolences to this monster who tortured pregnant women and slaughtered thousands of innocent people. Has there been much backlash or are we used to this sort of degeneracy now? Yeah, I, and I, again, I think it bears repeating. The, the, he's called the butcher uh, of Tehran for a reason, uh, not just what you just mentioned before mm. that he's done and the tens of thousands of people he killed and tortured. But I want to point out that um, one particular thing he did that was of particular deviousness is that before he murdered some y very young women who are virgins, and since there is a, uh, a prohibition against killing a virgin, the, the girls would be raped before they were hung so they could legally be killed. This is the kind of deviant monster we're talking about. Mm. And uh, first, let me talk about the UN real quick, uh, another cesspool of deviancy, where they, they lowered the, um, the flag to half-mast, and they had a moment of silence for this animal. Uh, they didn't have a moment of silence for the 1,200 Israelis who were raped and murdered on October 7th, but they did for the Iranian president. Now, you expect that 
from the UN. I covered the UN for five years. I know how disgusting that place is. The moral equivalency, the lack of morals when it comes to that place. But like you said, to have the State Department and by, by extension, the Biden administration put out their condolences, um, I, I don't know what they're playing at. I don't know what the point is. I don't even know why they would do that. The only thing I can think about is this, this bizarre notion that we have to befriend our enemies so they can understand that we're not the bad guys. We're not the guys you should be going after. Go after the other people. That's the only way I can rationalize this. Um, and of course, look, you could look at, at the Biden... Now, the, I will say this. At least the Biden administration showed outrage for the ICC ruling against Israel. Uh, but the ICC ruling happened not in small part because the Biden administration publicly said that Israel was going after and targeting civilians and ban weapons. If you don't think that played a role in that, you're crazy. So I think all of this is kind of is kind of coming together and coalescing and it, it you know to the point where we're actually having a moment of silence for a depraved human being like the president former president thankfully of Iran. Yes, I think a lot of people watch that at the UN and uh, their first thought was, let's defund the UN, let's get it, get out of there. Army Horowitz, thank you so much for your time this evening.